God, or indeed I was having a frank conversation with my brother Musa Faki as the AU, that it is really time that as a continent, and, and, and uh, I, I shared my thoughts with uh, Musa Faki, that as a continent, we must take charge of our destiny. Yes. We must take charge of our security. 60 years after the formation of the Africa Union, we cannot continue to depend on Europe, the EU, the US, China, and I don't know which other place, to manage our own affairs. I think it is time. And that is why we took the decision in DRC. We didn't look for resources from uh, I don't know which organization. We use Kenyan resources. Wagner, we, you heard about Wagner? Yeah, we, <laughs> <laughs> we, we are at uh, Uganda. We agreed that every country should deploy troops using their own resources yeah. because we need to take charge of our region. These are our issues. We need to deal with the security of our region because if we do not deal with the security of our region, we are foregoing opportunities of investment, of job creation, yes. of growing our economies, and we are basically working against ourselves. Without peace, there is no development. Absolutely. 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 So we but have we the wrong architecture in the management of the Africa Union. Yes. Yeah? I'm glad you said that. Yeah, okay, not me. Yeah. Musa Faki, who is the chair of our Africa Union Commission, can do very little because we have retained all the powers as heads of state. Right. And yet, you cannot run one country and run the continent of Africa. Right? We seriously need an interrogation of the management of the Africa Union. Today, we cannot even support Somalia. We are, we are waiting for EU to give us $85 million. $85 million. You know? We, we cannot fund it as AU. It is stupid. I mean, it, my brother. It is my, madness. My, so, yeah. so the are operation, you telling me 54 countries, 60 years after independence, they cannot manage 85 million to sort out Somalia, which has no government? <laughs> eh? let, let me. Let me. I, I, I just want to ask him. Uh, sorry, I want to ask you a question. He's my brother, but we, 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 we need to talk frankly. How many African countries did not pay their dues <laughs> this year? <laughs> Please tell us. Don't name, but tell us how many. How many countries did not pay their contribution, their contribution huh? this year? I said the majority paid. Majority paid. Yes. This is the answer of diplomat. Yeah, let, that, let us not put Musa in trouble. No, so, no, no, but these are facts. It's not, it's not, I mean, I'm not naming countries. I'm saying African countries do not respect their own union. If you don't respect your own union, nobody respects you. Full stop. <laughs> and then, the same guys who don't pay the contribution, they go to this international meeting and say, oh, African sovereignty, uh, African solution for African problems, Africa this, Africa that. Come on, guys. What is this? Hmm. We need to be credible. If we believe we have an African union, we need to have an African voice, we need to do it. My understanding is you your operational budget, my brother, is really paid by the Afri by European Union. This is a fact. This is a public knowledge. It's not secret or whatever. We are not paying for our own operational budget for the African Union. We are not. And then we said, okay, we're going to have a standing army under the African Union. And we went and talked to European and that were big arguments about, oh, we don't give arms, we don't. Ukraine changed all that. Now, Europeans are willing to give arms if needed. And we say to them, instead of sending troops, come and arm this Africa standing force. That solve your problem, solve our problem, and you guys don't like Wagner. That's the way not to get Wagner. Our boys go and do the fight, <laughs> but we need the helicopters, we need... Let, let me say this more. Yeah. Let me say this, to save 
uh, our faith. Yeah. That, uh, <laughs> that you yes, started this, not yes, me. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. We, we, have, we have a challenge. And uh, the positive thing is that there is a realization that it cannot continue this way. What are you going to do? How it to, cannot, how to cannot, fix the African cannot, Union? It cannot continue this way. How are you going to fix it? Um, we have what it takes to fix it. And the conversation is already begun Again. on what do we realistically do to be able to get the African Union to take charge of the affairs of our continent. Let me give you a case, a yeah. case in point. We decided, for example, that we are going to assemble our, uh, our market using the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Market yes, uh, that's uh, good eco Ecosystem. Yeah. And the, the positive thing is that it was unbelievable at the rate at which we were able to achieve consensus and we were able to achieve ratification and I want to tell you, it is among the things that happened in the shortest time possible. It tells you there is greater realization that unless we act in concert, unless we act together, we are unlikely to make any impact anywhere. How, so many, we, how many African we, presidents are on board? Uh, we, we have, at least on the market issue, we have put that together. There is a debate that is going to evolve. Like, for example, so but let me ask you a question. Let even the situation in Sudan, we were having a conversation, I know it's your country, we are having a conversation in Uganda day before yesterday. Yeah. And we were having the conversation on how IGAD, unfortunately the chairmanship of IGAD is currently in Sudan. So <laughs> it becomes very difficult. Because Here is this guy, make him chairman, yeah? <laughs> in absence of a legal government, yeah. I, we will this in guy. Fact, in fact, when, when, it was, when Sudan was given the chairmanship, it was because of Hamdok here, when it was a civilian government. But now we have a general, you know? So that is our region. So we, we were having that con uh, a candid conversation because we believe it is our responsibility. Yeah. We were having a conversation with Musa yesterday yeah. because we believe as, as, as AU, we should sort out these problems. Let me ask you a question and it, here. And we have what it takes to sort out That's these problems. That's wonderful, but instead of one country bearing the brunt, I mean, this is costly also. It is. Developing your uh, boys to go and do this, I mean, it's very costly. There was a proposal many years ago, and correct me if I'm wrong, our chairman, you guys decided to have a standing army for Africa. Mm. And that was many years ago. Where is that army? Mm. Why, why? That was a decision made. People said, look, we need, if there is terrorists they took place here, these guys took over this country, we need to have a ready standby force, which ready, under the command of the African Union, and it will go and do it. And instead of sitting back, oh, France, come help, Britain, America, come help. Why those guys should come and help us? They should Why not. Should come and fight they, our they should not come and help it's us. It's our own fight. And then we brag. We say we have half the world population in young people. Where are those young people? Mm. Go and fight your country. Mm. You know? And. Uh, so, uh, maybe we bring you the conversation, uh, my brother Musa, tell us, where is your army? I, I think we should not disturb Musa. <laughs> Musa, I, I perfectly he's, understand. He's your friend. Uh, no, no, he's not <laughs> he's, 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 uh, He perfectly understands. We right, have... uh, we'll move now a little bit from the uh, global issues because I think we don't have much time, maybe, I don't know, uh, to the region here. And if I look at the map, you are an island in a troubled neighborhood. Maybe Tanzania is good, is, is at least safe enough at the moment, and I hope to stay safe. But you have soldiers in three countries around you. People trying peacekeepers to pacify things, etc. That may end up being four if we send people to my country in Sudan 
We're going to need your soldiers, by the way, there sometime. <laughs> now, this is a tough situation for you because this neighborhood is not nice. Really, it's not nice. I mean, what's go well, I mean of course, it's beautiful countries, but what's going on is not nice. Uh, do, does Kenya feel a little bit anxious? I mean, with all these things around you in border, do you feel a little bit insecure here as, as Kenyan that with all these crazy guys around us, what's going to happen here? Well, it is true that we live in a tough neighborhood yeah. um, because we have a 1,000 kilometer border with uh, Somalia which has not have a functional government for 40 years, 30, 30 something years. We have um, a border with the South Sudan. They have major challenges. Uh, we have uh, uh, in the neighborhood also in DRC, where wow. we have um, uh, our, our soldiers trying to uh, pacify yeah, the Eastern, Eastern, the Eastern uh, DRC. We take it as a responsibility because um, we know that our stability, our security is intricately um, intertwined yeah. with the stability of our region. Yeah. And um, uh, we, we believe using the uh, architecture that exists, whether it is East African community, IGAD, or indeed I was...